Hey there, welcome back to another video. My name is Gloria and today I'm gonna to be talking about all of the books that I read in the month of June, my June wrap up. I read 34 books this month, which is ridiculous. Even for me, that number is preposterous. But a big disclaimer, the majority of these books were graphic novels and the other majority were for a younger audience. So they were middle grade or children. So they were quicker and faster to read. So that's a little bit of why I've read so many books. So that's my disclaimer. And I'm gonna break this video into a few parts. I'm gonna be talking about the middle grade section, the graphic novel section, and then the miscellaneous books that I read. So I'm not talking about them in the order that I read them. And I'm gonna try to highlight some more of the books that I actually enjoyed and wanna talk about. And just cause there's so many, I don't wanna go through every single one. Some aren't worth even going into too many detail over. So here we go, let's do it. So the first series that I'm gonna be talking about is the Anne of Green Gables series. I read books one through five this month. I'm hoping to finish the last three books of the series in July. So I read Anne of Green Gables, Anne of Avonlea, Anne of the Island, Anne of Windy Poplars, and Anne's House of Dreams. This book series follows an orphan girl named Anne who is adopted and lives on Green Gables on this beautiful farm in Prince Edward Island in Canada. And she's a little bit mischievous. She has a crazy imagination. And we follow her growing up, all of the different people that she interacts with, all of the different situations that she gets up to, all of the different life stages that she's in. So from being a child and an adolescent to going to college and following a career, being a teacher, and then eventually becoming a wife and a mother. And overall, really enjoying the series. I gave most of these books four stars. A couple of them were three or 3.5. It was written in the early 1900s by Ellen Montgomery. I love the world that she created. I think she's a great author. I originally picked them up because I really enjoyed watching the show Anne with an E on Netflix. It's sort of an adaptation of the first book and absolutely loved the show. A recent favorite watch of mine and so it got me hooked onto reading the books. I've actually been listening to all of the books on Libby. As much as I absolutely enjoy this book series, it's not an absolute favorite for a couple of reasons. So the first one being that I am an extremely detail-oriented person, so I love to know more details. And I think, unfortunately, one of the downsides of this book series is that one book, which is fairly short, covers a very long span of time. So the first book covers three years, and you only get short little glimpse and tidbits bits of certain interactions that have happened and I wanted more details from certain characters and a little bit more depth. The other couple things that I find a little bit annoying is that she is a big meddler and a matchmaker so there are a ton of different characters in this book series just like an overwhelming amount that you can't really keep up with because she just hops into a certain situation or a certain neighbor's life and then meddles in it and then kind of leaves and we don't really hear about those characters again and some of the main characters in the first books particularly Marilla, who is the mother figure she adopted Anne. We really don't hear from her at all in the latter books and that is such a big disappointment for me because I wish that Ella Montgomery wrote her in and I do understand that Anne has grown up and has a life of her own now and lives in a different part but I feel like this woman who was such an important person in raising her in her adolescent years could have been featured more in the latter books. So a few disappointments but overall again enjoying the series and it's been a lot of fun. Next up because we're talking about children middle grade books I'm going to be mentioning a few of the other ones that I read this month. The first one is The Westing Game by Ellen Raskin. This was a buddy read or group pick with Chantel from An Intentional Life. She's doing like a summer read along and this was the book that she picked. This is a classic mystery. I was really intrigued by it because I love the movie Knives Out, which is a whodunit mystery, kind of like Clue. Someone dies and they try to figure out the clues and there are heirs that are trying to get money from the person who died. And this is a similar premise. For me, it was poorly executed so I gave it like a 2.5 three star. There was just a lot going on in this book, a lot of characters, and the whole book is sort of just different clues and wordplay. I wasn't clever enough to figure any of that out. I didn't necessarily like really any of the characters in here. The ending just kind of happened out of nowhere. It wasn't my favorite mystery but I'm still glad I read it and I've heard that the book The Inheritance Games has the same premise but is executed way better. Then I read The Red Pencil by Andrea Davis Pink me. So this book came on my radar because also Chantal from An Intentional Life mentioned the books that she likes that are free verse. And so she mentioned this book, it was in my mind. And literally that day I stopped by a little free library and this was in it. So I picked it up and I read it this month because it was quick and it was easy. And it's a free verse poetry 
middle grade. This book is set in Sudan, Africa in the Darfur region and it follows Amira who is a 12 year old girl. She has just come of age and she is the main narrator of this book. She talks about her life in her village, her relationship with her mother and father and sister and other people in their village and she is artistic and is dying to go to school. Her mother is opposed to that because she wants to raise her to be a wife and a mother and doesn't really think an education is going to do anything for her but really the main point of the story is when the Janjaweed militia invades their village and kills a bunch of people and they become refugees fleeing the land and then live in a refugee camp. It deals with grief and displacement, losing your home, losing your family, and I thought it was beautiful. I gave it four stars. And finally, another middle grade that I finished this month was Fighting Words by Kimberly Brubaker Bradley. I first saw this book mentioned on the Bookish Realm channel and I don't really know why I picked it up. Sometimes I just hear about books and immediately request them on Libby and then they become available. Level, so I just picked them up next. This book also is a really great middle grade. I also gave it four stars. It deals with very heavy topics, particularly rape, sexual abuse, and being in the foster care system. The main character is Della, who is a 12 year old girl. Her and her sister are placed in foster care after her mother is imprisoned from being a meth addict and blowing up a hotel room, and they lived with an abusive man. And this book is really this young girl dealing with being placed in foster care. What does it mean that her older sister is dealing with trauma that she doesn't really understand. This book covers some social dynamics in school and in general Della standing up for herself and her body and I thought it was great. I really enjoyed it. Now moving on to graphic novels. I mentioned this in my mid-year freakout video. I discovered graphic novels this month which is a complete surprise and something that I really didn't see coming. So the first one I picked up was this Anne of Green Gables graphic novel which I really enjoyed. The illustrations were lovely and this was such a great companion to reading the book series. Reading this book though made me find the graphic novel section of the library and I found a new niche that I really enjoy and that is nonfiction graphic novels, which is actually surprisingly a lot up. The first one that I read and loved is A Fire Story by Brian Fies. This book is the account of the author and illustrator's tragic loss of his home to the California wildfires in 2017. It was just beautifully illustrated, beautifully told story. It was journalistic, artistic, humorous. The other nonfiction I picked up was Guantanamo. Autonomo Voices, True Accounts from the World's Most Infamous Prison by Sarah Merck. This one I enjoyed. I gave four stars, but it was a lot more political. I didn't really know anything about Guantanamo Bay Prison, which is a prison that the US military holds in Cuba, and it became a prison mainly post 9-11 to house terrorists. Like the subtitle mentioned, it followed different accounts and different people's stories, almost like interviews, whether it was a soldier who worked at the prison or a lawyer involved trying to get a prisoner have a trial or a prisoner or also political figures that made different decisions about the prison over the years. I think the main kind of theme of this book was this prison shouldn't be here or it is wrongfully being used and prisoners are treated extremely unfairly. I had no background about it so I found it very informative. I think the most crazy statistic that I learned is that it cost 445 million dollars to run Guantanamo Bay prison every year and the cost of a prisoner at Guantanamo Bay, one prisoner is $11 million versus the average cost of holding someone in a federal prison in the US is $36,000. Like I said, informative, very interesting. And another nonfiction that I read is Oak Flat, A Fight for Sacred Land in the American West by Lauren Redness. First of all, this cover is really lovely and that was the main thing that drew me to it. I gave this book three stars only because although I enjoyed the information, it was a little bit more dense and read like a news article, someone being interviewed versus a more narrative nonfiction account. But this book deals with the Apache Indian tribe and their sacred land in Arizona and how mining companies want to destroy that land and mine for copper and the political tension and battle that is currently at play over this land. It also dives into the history of the land and the history of the Apache tribe. Overall, very informative and I enjoyed it. Another graphic novel that I picked up this month is Picket Line by Brina Weiderhoft. I found this one in a little free library and I was really into graphic novels this month so I picked it up. When I looked it up, I found out that this author lives in Portland, so that's really fun. And it's actually signed by the author, which is really interesting. So it says, to George and Mary, hope you enjoy this story so glad to have you as friends 
looks like George and Mary gave away their copy of the book. But overall, this book is just like a cute little story about a girl from the Midwest who moves to Northern California near the Redwoods. And she's sort of lost figuring out what she wants to do with her life. And she starts working for this landscaping company. And there's also like this big hedge fund guy, big corporation who wants to destroy part of the forest and build this fancy condos and she's caught in the middle of this war between people who live in the area and are protesting to save the land and these like rich people who want to build a neighborhood. It was very sweet, light, fluffy, nothing really major. It was just a fun quick little read. I gave it three stars. And then next up I read, uh, it's just so heavy, these 16 graphic novels. <laughs> the Walking Dead. Like I said, I was perusing the graphic novel section and I saw that they had the entire Walking Dead series. Here's a bit of an explanation of this. I am a fan of the show. I didn't really know that the show was based on a comic book series. So that was the main driving factor of me picking up this entire series. Now, this whole series that I can't pick up because it's so heavy is actually 193 comic books compacted into 16 hardcover books. So I read them all in June. That's why my books read this month was so high. Overall, this series I enjoyed. And the funny thing about it is this is totally a guilty pleasure and I probably would never recommend this series to anyone because it has all the things that I don't enjoy. It is horror, it is gory, it is graphic, it is explicit in both language and sexual content, and it's all about zombies. So really just like not my brand, not really me, and I probably wouldn't pick up anything else that has those buzzwords, but I picked this one up because I was already familiar with the TV series, which I enjoyed. Also probably for reasons that I shouldn't enjoy it, but I just, it was good. So all that being said, don't read this unless you already watch the show and like it. And for those of you who aren't familiar with the series, it follows Rick Grimes, who is a small town police officer who gets shot and wakes up from his coma to a world completely changed, to a world filled with walking dead who are zombies. And he goes on a quest to find his wife and his son, ends up finding them in like a camp. And over the course of like, 10 plus years, it is a survival story of this group of people and characters die off all the time and new characters are introduced, but this main group of people trying to survive. And at first you think the main issue is just these zombies who are trying to eat you. But then eventually you learn that the real trouble and the real problem is people. The people who have survived that are actually super evil. This series has some of the most intense and vicious villains and some of the other really interesting things that this series covers is dealing with grief and dealing with loss because so many characters die in this book series and also another main point that the series deals with is what it means to kill someone and what that does to you and how that changes your soul so all that to say i enjoyed these books overall most of these were between three and four stars and i'm glad i read them and i'm glad i know how the series ends and how the author who wrote it intended it to end the TV show itself is very different than these books. Some similar characters, but overall completely changed some major plot lines. I prefer the show because it's toned down with how intense and explicit it is. Those are all the graphic novels. I'm gonna talk about some miscellaneous books that I read. I'm gonna talk about three more nonfiction books that I read this month. The first one is Stranger Care by Sarah Centelli's. This was the only five-star read that I had this month. This was a beautiful memoir and account of Sarah Centelli's experience as a foster parent trying to adopt. She wrote her story really beautifully. It was interspersed with some lovely like nature writing, which I found very pleasing. And overall, this book was incredibly informative. I knew a little bit about the foster care system, but not in as much detail as she explained. And even though I didn't fully agree with her mindset on some things, particularly her going into foster care with a mission to adopt, which is very hard, as I have been told, and as she experienced. Lovely book. It was tough and sad, but really informative, and I really enjoyed it. Another nonfiction that I really liked was The Wasp That Brainwashed the Caterpillar by Matt Simon. This is a nice little science-y textbook, almost. I totally imagine having something like this in a classroom setting. This book took a deep dive into some very weird and interesting animals on this planet, and how they have evolved to create really interesting ways to survive and adapt to their environments 
humans and to their prey and predators. One critique I have of this is that um, so there were a few moments when the author was talking about a particular animal and how so obviously there cannot be a god because of that. This book obviously very much focuses on evolution and is a very big proponent of Charles Darwin and that he researched and this is like a much bigger discussion when it comes to faith and evolution and faith and science and although this was like a great little science book and i loved how he talked about all the different animals and all the fun random stuff in here i don't really like how he so obviously said that there isn't a higher power or that there couldn't be because of this particular animal or something like that's a little bit arrogant to say that because there's plenty of scientists and really intelligent people who still have faith and belief. Who are you to say that a god doesn't exist because of evolution? Um, anyways, that's a way bigger discussion and subject to talk about. Again, it wasn't like a prominent point of this book. It just happened a few times. But besides that, I learned about some really cool animals and that was fun. Another technically nonfiction is So Now You Know, a compendium of completely useless information by Harry Bright and Harlan Briscoe. Found this in a little free library. It's a tiny little book of literally just facts. Fun facts. Let me read you one. Did you know that the strawberry is the only fruit with seeds on the outside of the skin? So now you know. <laughs> I have two books left. One is a thriller and it is the worst book that I read this month. I gave it one star, and that is They Never Learn by Lane Fargo. This is like a serial killer thriller. It follows this professor in a fancy university who uh, kills men that sexually assault women. There is a dual timeline, dual perspective in this book. And I just really didn't enjoy really any part of this. I didn't like the main character, didn't like the language, also very sexually explicit content. It didn't make me feel good in any way. And then finally, the last book that I'll be talking about that I read this month is The Bees by Laleen Paul. I have a whole vlog where I talk about this book and be reading it, so go watch that if you want more details. This was a sci-fi from the perspective of a single honeybee in a beehive, and it was very imaginative, and it was very strange, and it was unlike anything I've read before, but I did really enjoy it, and this book has stuck with me. It has impacted me on a personal level, probably because I'm biased and I see honeybees every single day because my dad is a beekeeper and we have beehives outside. So it's made me think about bees and beekeeping and the societal structures that honeybees have. Really enjoyed this book. I gave it four stars. That's it. That's the 34 books that I finished in the month of June. And a lot of them were really good overall. None were completely amazing or blew me out of the water, maybe except Stranger Care. But overall, it was a fun reading month. And I'm glad I discovered graphic novels because that's kind of different and new and I feel like I'll be on the lookout for good nonfiction graphic novels in the future. Let me know if you've read any that you like. Appreciate you guys tuning in and I will see you guys with another video soon. Bye!